Grandchild, in all the years I lived in this great manor, I discovered the answers to many mysteries that have tested my faith and helped me believe in things I cannot see. Now it's your turn to solve them for yourself. I've enclosed the first of many clues. If you so choose to follow it, you too will unlock the greatest mysteries of all time. I am excited for what you will soon find. All my love, Great Grandpa Piff Puff. Good grief. I just walked through the mud of load of spider webs, and I hate spiders. Ugh. This must be the study. It's just as I remember them. I used to think these books have eyes that used to watch me. According to my scientific findings, this must be. This is where Parker and I used to play hide and seek when we were little. Yes, we used to hide and we used to play this game all the time. Stevie! Parker, there you are. What are you doing here? I'm supposed to be here. What are you doing here? I asked you first. So? Are you here because you invited yourself or did you receive a letter? What's that going to do with you? Well, if you are here because of that, it's a big deal. I think Great Grandpa Piff Puff sent us letters so he could, we could solve mysteries in this really old mansion. If you think that I've come here looking around this mansion for some sort of mystery, then you've jumped to the very wrong conclusion. Are you telling me that you're here because you've got nothing better to do? I've got plenty to do, actually, thank you very much. But the thought of you just wandering around aimlessly looking for clues in this run-down mansion had me up at night. So I thought I'd better come here and show up and help you come to your senses. Why would you care so much? Well, Parker, as your well, older and wiser cousin, I thought it was my obligation to come and help you to do this. Because, you know, you are a bit on the gone sometimes, let's be frank. So, you know, come on, you are really, let's be. I'm not gullible. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness. Remember when we were younger? You believed anything that great grandpa ever said. Remember when, um, for example, when we were younger and grand great grandpa Pippa read us a story about Peter Rabbit the night before and then you just thought there was a dragon living into the basement of his and that. And then whenever the wind blew, you thought that the trees had claws that would go grab you out of your bed at night through the window and then take you away somewhere, all because of your great big imagination. I know that was all in my head, but this is a real mystery and this is for real. Well, I think it's a little bit of a waste of time, to be honest. Well, I don't. Quite serious about this, aren't you? Just like your theories about finding those snow snakes winter clothes back in the winter of 2012. Remember that? Hey, stop bringing up the past. But this is for real, this is a real mystery. And that's why Great Grandpa Piff Paff sent us both a letter. Now let me see what yours says. What makes you think I'm going to show it to you? Aha! I knew you had a letter, I just wanted to prove it. Now let me see what it says. No, I want to see yours first. Fine. Mine says, Through the stars, this God is. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Through the stars, this God is. I don't know. That's why I need to see what yours says. Alright. Here you go. Now I'm just going to see if there's some silly game like when we were little. If this is a silly game, why do you have your detective bag of gadgets? Hmm. Right. Yours says, Night reveal can prove real. Night 
might reveal can prove real. I don't understand this at all. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. May 5th. When I was a young boy, I sometimes wondered if God was real. I couldn't see Him, but I knew there must be some explanation for this world we live in and how it came to be. I began to investigate the matter, and my journey took me back to the beginning of time. Genesis 1. Before time began, there was nothing. Not even the sun and moon were around. It was a big bunch of emptiness. But God was there. God had a great idea. He wanted to fill up the emptiness. And when God wants you to do something, all He has to do is speak, and it will happen. It's kind of like if you could say, let there be cotton candy, and then all of a sudden, there's a big fluffy bunch of cotton candy right in front of your eyes. God decided it was time to make the whole wide world and everything in it. He didn't do it all at once. It took a little while. On the first day, God said, let there be light. And then light appeared. God called that light 
day, and the darkness, night. Over the next several days, God continued to create the world. He created the bright blue sky, the big oceans, and all the land. God also created the sun that helps everything grow, a moon in the night sky, and all of the stars in space. On the fifth day, God created all of the animals that live in the oceans, like great white sharks and tiny minnows. He also made the birds in the air, like the bald eagle and the fast little hummingbird. And then, on day six, God made all of the other animals that live on the land. God wanted someone to enjoy all that He had made, so God created something, or should I say, someone, that He was going to love more than all the rest. People. He said, let us make man to reflect our own image. So God created a man named Adam and a woman named Eve. Then He told them to have a family and to take care of every living thing on the earth. When God had finished creating the world and everything in it, He thought that it was good. Then, on the seventh day, He took a break and rested. Sort of like after you tidy your room. It looks so nice and clean that you just want to sit and look at it because you did such a great job. I've realized something. We can know who God is because of all of the wonderful things that He has created. And He did it just for us. God made things too wonderful to even understand, like how a human eye can see or how our squishy brains can make our body move. God even made our hearts so that they could be filled with love and so we can love each other. He made the sun shine across the whole earth so that people in two different places can see it at the same time. And God set the sun the perfect distance from the earth so plants can grow and people could live. We might not be able to see God, but we can see all of the wonderful things He has created and know that God is real. He created things that are impossible for people to make. That totally makes sense. That's why Great Grandpa Pithrat must have left this page of Genesis 1 on the telescope to prove that God is real. When we look at the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that's impossible for humans to make. Yeah, that's really true, actually. Stevie, I think this is the next clue. Let's go! Let's go!